want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers! I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! Do like Jesus said, search the scriptures and you'll know what is true. Amen. And welcome to another edition of the What is Truth radio program here with you every Sunday morning at 7 a.m. for one good hour to wake you up and give you some good news from the good book, which is the Bible. This is uh, Pastor Michael Caesar. I'm here in my studio. My partners in truth are uh, busy on various errands. Uh, Brother Mark Sassy, who is a great blessing to us, is a uh, is busy with some work the Lord has him doing, and uh, John D. is also taking care of some things. He'll probably be joining us in a little bit, but until he does, I'm going to continue on the studies that Mark and John have been uh, reading through with you in the epistle of Paul, the apostle, to the Galatians. It's the ninth book in the New Testament. We've been working through this uh, little book. It's a, it's a short book. It's only uh, six chapters. And the theme of the book is the truth that God wants us to understand. It's kind of like a, a mini book of Romans, that the justification that God wants to give to a sinner is going to come by faith and faith alone. Solo fide. Uh, that's what they would say at the time of the Reformation. That would mean faith alone. Uh, solo fide, according to a solo gracia, that would be God would bring it by grace. You believe by faith God will give you the justification with his mighty arm of grace. And they would also say solo scriptura because you'll only learn these truths in the Bible. It, it is very interesting, as we've uh, studied, and Jesus would say, and we, we always talk about this on the What is Truth program, search the scriptures, because the scriptures are the scriptures of truth. And they were written by God. And although there are many books on the planet, even religious books, those are written by men. And, and God wants us to have his words. His words are eternal, his words are spiritual. His words can confer the gift of eternal life. Again, this program, which comes to every Sunday, say, I just missed it. I'd like to listen to an old one. We are sponsored by a little church in Amherst, New York, called Grace and Truth Church. Um, if you want to go to that website, spell out Grace, A-N-D, Truth, Church, if you don't put church, you'll end up on another website, graceandtruthchurch.org. Up will come the uh, homepage. There will be a number of options. Hit the, page, the uh, option that says sermons. Then will come some options, and one of them will say YouTube. If you click the YouTube tab, up will come the YouTube programs of what is truth. You'll also see some of the teachings that go on at the Little Church, Grace and Truth, but the What is Truth program is available there. You can listen to the old programs, give us the old thumbs up if you want, and share it with a friend. In today's study, we're going to get back to Galatians. We have been in a chapter 2. What Paul is giving to us is a, uh, a history in this chapter of how God worked with him and then through him, what God first wants to do is to work with you and to bring you the gift. And for Paul, it was not just the gift of salvation. It was the gift of serving and being a teacher of the word of God. And he talks about 14 years, you know, I waited until God sent me back to Jerusalem. And when I got to Jerusalem, I saw that the apostles were gathered together there. And I saw that uh, James, the apostle, and uh, Cephas, or Peter, the apostle, and uh, John, the apostle. And of course, James writes a little book in the back of the Bible, the epistle of James. Peter writes two little books in the back of the Bible, first and second of Peter. John writes five books in the Bible, the Gospel of John, first, second, and third John, and the book of Revelation. And what he sees is that God committed to them the ministry to the Jewish people, because James and Peter and John were all Jews. And so he says, I'm committing to you the work to the Jewish people. Go to the towns outside of Jerusalem. Go to the north. Go to the east. Go to uh, mostly the north and the east. Some even go to the south if you want. But go to those synagogues where the Jews are and give them the gospel. And then he said unto me, 
Paul was committed the gospel of the uncircumcision. I'm the gospel, I'm the uh, apostle of the Gentiles. And so I'm to go to the Gentiles. So Paul is going to write 14 books in the New Testament. And they're, to you and me, most of us are Gentiles in America. I guess there's, what, 7 million Jews out of 320 or 40 million people. So most of us are Gentiles. And this book of Galatians is to us. Now a Jew can read it too, and he'll get some great blessings. And the thing he wants us to understand is he's closing out the chapter in verse 15, and he's talking. He says, you know, we who are Jews by nature, because Paul was born a Jew, although God said, I'm going to send you to the Gentiles, you were born a Jew, and and uh, you were raised with the Old Testament scriptures. You were raised at the temple, so you have a good background and a good foundation of the writings of the prophets. I'm going to send you to these people, but he's talking and he's saying, you know, I was a Jew just like uh, Peter and uh, James and and uh, John, and we who are Jews by nature are not sinners of the Gentiles, meaning not that we're not sinners, but we're a different type of sinner. Gentiles never had the oracles of God. So they're sinning in ignorance. We're Jews <laughs> sinning with knowledge because we've got the book. And, and this is why God was so upset with the Jewish people. And you read, for example, I'm just going to read to you a portion uh, from a Jewish prophet before Jesus Christ came by the name of Isaiah. And Isaiah, the Jewish prophet, was writing to the Jewish people. And this is the vision of Isaiah, chapter 1 of the book of Isaiah, verse 1. And it says, The vision of Isaiah concerning Jerusalem. In the days of, and he names a bunch of kings, Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, who were all kings of Judah living in Jerusalem. And here's what God says to these Jews. He says, Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth, the Lord, the Creator, hath spoken. And then God says, I've nourished and brought up children, and they've rebelled against me. And he's talking about the Jews. He says in verse 4, you've become a sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a people that have forsaken the Lord. And what they've done is they've forsaken the Word of God. And so Paul, telling the people in Galatia, and there were some Jews there living at the synagogue, he says, the, the Gentiles, when they sinned, they didn't have the book. We've sinned with the book. But what's the lesson God wants us to know? Verse 16, he wants us to know that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. And, and the whole purpose of the Bible, what God was preparing the Jewish people for when he wrote to Isaiah and he wrote through Moses and he wrote through all those prophets was, listen, it's not your works at the temple that's going to save you. What I want you to do is have faith that I'm going to send the Messiah one day and the Messiah is going to take care of all things when he shows up. I remember there was a, when Jesus was performing his ministry during that three and a half years. And he was walking up northward in Israel. He started in Jerusalem and he headed up to Galilee. And he was about uh, 30 miles north of uh, Jerusalem. He ran into a woman. And the woman said, um, I know that the Messiah is coming, which is called the Christ. When he comes, he'll tell us all things. I mean, she didn't know a lot, and she didn't study at the temple, but she knew that the purpose of the Bible that they had from Moses all the way through to Malachi was to prepare the people for the coming of the Messiah. Now, she didn't know who he was at the time, and Jesus was in the beginning of his ministry, and Jesus then looked at her and said, I that speak unto thee, I am he. I'm that Messiah you're waiting for. And so Paul now puts it together, and he says, we know that we're not justified by the works of the law. God didn't give us the law to save us. God didn't give us the Ten Commandments to save us. He gave us the Ten Commandments to show us the holiness of God. 
And, and those Ten Commandments, if anybody could keep them perfectly, would be holy. All, all ten of them, they would know who the true God is. They would never take his name in vain. They would honor his Sabbath. They would um, honor their parents. They, they would never not only not kill or commit adultery or steal, they wouldn't bear false witness or even covet. I mean, that's pure holiness. That's, that's as holy as you can get. And what he's saying is the story of the Bible is from Adam and Abraham and Moses and David. None of these people could keep the law. How are we going to get saved? By the faith of Jesus Christ. He came to be the sin bearer. He came to be the Messiah. He told them, if I be lifted up on this cross, I'll be able to bear all the sin and draw all men. And so Paul's saying in Galatians, you know, we Jews who have the book <laughs> and the Gentiles don't have the book, and I'm going to tell them, we know that we're not justified by the works of the law. We're, we're justified by the faith of the Messiah, Jesus Christ. And so we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. Why, why not, Paul? Because he goes on and he says in Galatians 3.16, he closes the sentence with, for uh, by the works of the law shall no flesh, flesh be justified. What, what he realizes is that as we attempt to do the law, we'll fall short in just one point to which someone would say, well, that's not, that's not so bad. But, but the Apostle James would write later on in the Bible, in his small epistle, he would say, the royal law, according to the scripture, says, whosoever shall keep the whole law, yet offend in one point, he's guilty of all. To which I think, that, that almost doesn't make sense to me. You mean I only broke one thing and I'm guilty of all? And, and, and God would say it like this. Think of it like this. He would say, okay, let's say you are attempting to climb your way up to heaven from earth. And you've decided to climb up the 10 links of the law. As you're climbing up the law, if one link breaks, you fall all the way back down to earth. It's like the whole thing is broken just by one link breaking. So, so we need someone who can keep the whole law. Well, that's Jesus Christ, the faithful Jesus. He kept the law. So, so again, verse 16, we Jews have learned that we're not justified by the works of the law. We're justified by the faith of Jesus Christ. Jesus is faithful and true. Jesus said, I've come to keep the law, not to break it. And he fulfilled every aspect of the law. And then, therefore, we that have believed in Jesus, so we can be justified by the faith of Christ, not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Now, this is written probably 30 years after Jesus went to heaven. This is a New Testament writing that applies to you and me today, for we live in the New Testament. We, we, we no longer live in the Old Testament. The New Testament has been established by the work of Jesus Christ. As the Bible will, will testify, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by the means of his death to give us redemption for the transgression that was under the law, we may receive the promise of an of eternal inheritance. I mean, he his testament, a testament is like a last will and testament, is, is if of necessity there must be the death of the testator. And Jesus said, this is the New Testament in my blood. Tomorrow I'll die on that cross. And, and the minute I die, the testament becomes forceful. And now the first te the testament is washed away and the new one comes into force because Jesus Christ died for our sins. We are sanctified by the offering of the body of Jesus Christ on Calvary's cross once for all. This man, Jesus, offered one sacrifice for sins forever. And then he ascended into heaven to sit on the right hand of God. And by his one offering at Calvary's cross, he has perfected forever them that are sanctified, of course, by faith. 
So Paul's trying to tell us it's, it's faith, faith alone in Christ alone, by what's written in the Bible alone so we can receive grace alone. No works are needed. And then he goes on to say in Galatians chapter 2 and verse 17, if while we be justified and we seek to be justified by Christ and we ourselves are found sinners, is Christ become the minister of sin? God forbid. No, if we sin, we're the one that's sinning, not Christ. One of the most difficult things for us to understand is a born-again Christian, and often we will say things like this, well, we're, we're sinners and you're sinners. In God's eyes, we're not sinners. We are saints. We were sinners. We have been sanctified by Christ. We have been justified by Christ. We have been translated by Christ into the kingdom of God's dear son. When we trusted in Christ, the Bible says this is the gospel of salvation. And after we believe we were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, and we are now one of the saints. We are part of the communion of saints. We were sinners, but now we're saints in God's eyes, in God's eye. We still are going to struggle we understand that saints struggle, but they're saints. They're not sinners. If you'd like to be a saint, you must be born again and justified by Jesus Christ. Paul writes to the church of God, are those that are sanctified in Jesus Christ, you are called to be saints. How? When you call upon the name of Jesus Christ as your Lord, and you receive the grace of God that brings salvation. I was a sinner until the age of 39. At 39, I called on Jesus Christ. I became one of the saints. Uh, John has just joined me, and Brother John D., good to have you, brother. Sorry, I'm late, brother. It's okay, brother. It's I'm okay. Late. Jump right in. Where The water's fine. <laughs> okay. So, so, so you went through that process, too. I did, I did 20 years ago. Amen. 20 years ago. And I think it's the first thing, brother, is that you have to, you have to realize that you're a sinner. That's it, that's it. That's it. You have to realize it. And, and until you get into God's word, uh, you could justify your behavior any way you can. But when you get into God's word, it's it's a mirror. That's that's interesting. You said you have to justify yourself. I was doing some work this morning out in my backyard and um, I, the radio was on and they were playing this uh, song from years ago. I'm going up to the spirit in the sky. I'm going up when I die. I'm not a sinner. I've never sinned. I, I've got a friend in Jesus. And I'm going, wait a second. Jesus is the friend of sinners. Jesus came to call sinners to repentance. Right. If you can't admit you're a sinner, you're going to a different spirit, and he's not in the sky. You've got to. Jesus came to call sinners to repentance. He says, I came not to call the righteous. If you think you're okay, I can't help you. Like you said, John, you've got to be willing to admit that. No, he said it took me a while. A physician comes not for the for the healthy, but for the sick. Right. That's what he said. The great physician said that. And and, and you have to admit you're sick. I mean, you go to a doctor when you finally say, I'm sick, I need to go to a doctor. Right. You know, but but sometimes you could be uh, pig headed and stay home and get sicker. The, oh right? yeah. Oh yeah. We had a we almost had a, to death. We had a patient. Um it was, it was a sad one. I was working in Kentucky at the time one of my first jobs and uh this lady began to develop a lump in her breast and she didn't want to hear about it didn't want to know about it so she ignored it and it got bigger and bigger and it went from the size of first a golf ball to a lemon to an orange to a grapefruit and then it started to break through and it was weeping outside the breast and it was open by the time she came to us it was a cancer that not only was in the breast. It had gone into the lymph nodes and through the body and was in her brain. It was stage four. There's nothing we could do. And she had ignored it for three years. And uh, yeah. it, that, see, now now that's a physical illness. That's a physical. Jesus yeah. is talking about a spiritual that's illness. Right. That's right. And, uh, you know, you always hate, hate that in, in today's day. Yeah. In today's day and age, I hate to hear it when people, men with prostate cancer, women with ovarian yeah. cancer, all they have to do is get checked up. But, but then again, in this day and age, what are, a radio talk show like this with Bibles, you know, we use these sinister little um, little devices, these mobile devices, but they can't be used for good. I mean, you know, I've got a Bible on mine. i got a concordance on mine. Oh, I mean, sure. It, and, and what are you waiting for? 
what people invest in their 401k, everybody's concerned about what are they going to do after they stop working and all. What about your life insurance, yeah. life after life? Yeah, when you draw that last breath, then where are you? Yeah, I mean, if you know, don't you think it's important to at least understand and so you can make a, a decision and then, on it? I, I mean, so many people, and this Mike and I could tell you that they make a decision on their eternal life uh, based on ignorance. They don't make it their business. They don't look into it. They, they never look, examine they it. Yeah. Exactly. They don't look into it. They rather put their head in the sand, or they rather, you know, hear from. You know, unfortunately, we're so used to talking heads yeah. on these. You know, nobody does the research anymore for themselves. Politics, whatever. They just listen to the talking head on the TV. Sure. And they actually tell you, well, so and so on Fox said, or so and so on CNN. And I say, you're you, that's foolish. They're yeah. telling you. It's, they're telling you what 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 they want to tell you. Make yeah. your own decision. Yeah, and um, and and I I say in this age it's never been easier. It's never been easier. It's harder, but it's easier. It's harder because it seems like so many people are removed from God. It seems yeah. like, and you and I have talked about this in the mid nineteen hundreds, early nineteen hundreds, men and women on death row, right? And they would and somebody would come in and, and witness and say, you know, my my grandmother used to. I remember my, those that's days. her grandma used to talk yeah, and pray for me. Yeah, yeah. my grandma, and, and they would actually know some scripture. Yes, but they just decided to walk right. the path. Now, that, oh, there's, somebody, they can't even spell God. Yeah, my they, wife they don't know. Loves my wife. Um, you know, we had four boys, so she's really good with with young men talking with men. Mm -hmm. Better with men than with girls, and so she'll she'll talk to. Uh, young teenage boys and young men when she's at the grocery store and the parking lot, hey, young man, come here. And she'll talk with them. And um, she's amazed at how many of them have never even heard of the gospel or Jesus Christ. There's such an, an ignorance today. Yes. When we were young, John, I think 75% of the neighborhood went to church, if right. not every week, at least every month. Right. Today, what's it, 5%, 10%, very few right. go. You know, yeah. they just, they're just just And that's because the generation before them, that's when it started. Yeah. The generation before them, and they just started to get weaker and weaker and weaker. And uh, as you well know, Mike, I mean, you just call it in, in the 60s, when they kicked God out of the schools and they made all Time these, Magazine I mean, is just, God dead. They had the article yeah, yeah, on the yeah, front it's, page. It's only been 60 years. Yeah. It's only been 60 years, not even a full lifetime for a human being. Yeah. And and look at how, how it's regressed. And yet in 60 years, if kids have kids at the age of 20, that's three generations. Right. That's right. And in three generations, God was warning them when I'm going all the way back to when God came down on the mountain. I just want to turn back and read it in Exodus chapter um, 19. And God said to Moses, he said, uh, uh, this, get your people back from the mountain because I'm going to come down on the third day. And on the third day, there were thunders and lightnings and, and the Lord descended on Mount Sinai in fire and it was the smoke of a furnace and the whole mountain was quaking and then God began to speak in chapter 20 I am the Lord thy God and he gave these uh, beautiful 10 commandments I want you to know there's one true God it, it is me the God of Abraham Isaac and Jacob verse uh, 3 Thou shalt have no other gods before me verse, verse 4 thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image I don't want any idolatry. Don't try and make pictures of me. You're going to learn of me not through sight, but through words. Don't bow down to graven images. Don't serve them. Verse 5, I, the Lord thy God, I'm a jealous God. I visit the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generation. And what happens is if this goes on for three or four generations, they begin to hate me. And, and we've had maybe three or four generations now where people haven't gone to, to a church to hear the word of God. And so, you know, John, when you're trying to pick out a church, you want to go to a church where they're opening the Bible yes. for you. And they're saying, now we're going to read from portions of the Bible. And they encourage you to open a Bible and read along with them. Yes. That's one of the best things you can do. Yes, and unfortunately, many churches now don't, don't do that. They have... Um most churches, who was, someone was in our church the other day, they said they were blown away by people actually bring their Bible to church. And at this church, at, this at church, our at Grace at and Truth, church. yeah. And yeah. then you go to some churches, they have it, it's in the pew and it's never taken out. Yeah. It's 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 just there. There's a hymnal, there's a, there's a, there's a Bible, and there's a hymnal. And these are the older ones. The newer ones don't even have hymnals That's or right. 
Bibles right. in them. And they don't get, to, they're not taken out. And then, and then whoever is given the word of God up on, on up there is, uh, uh, it's, it's just them talking. It's another talking head. Sure, it's watered down sort of. It, yeah. It really, yeah. really is. It, yeah. And you know, folks, it's just the riches th this book is spiritual. We were talking the other day, we talk about it all the time. It's alive and it's, and it's, it's, it has, it has its way of, of, of touching your heart the, for the individual. It doesn't make you become like, uh, how, how do we say, like, like a robot. Like, like people go, they say we have blind faith in you Christians. And no, that's not the case. We have biblical faith. That's right. This book, this word of God touches you and your personality yeah. and cleanses things within you yes. over time. And you could still be you. That's what, that's what I love about, about it. I did not know this. When I was on the outside looking in, I thought that, you know, you had to be um, all these born agains, if you will. They walk the same way. They talk the same way. You know, they, they're not allowed to laugh. They're not allowed to have fun. Nothing could be further from the truth. This, this book, when you read it properly, sure. allows you to be the man you are, the woman you are, right, with God inside you. Yeah. Cleans you up. It we're in the book of Galatians, you know, and if Amen. we were just to skip ahead to chapter five, one of the things he promises for those of us who will come to the Lord and be led of the spirit in verse 22 is we'll get the fruit of the spirit. And it says that's a capital S that's God's spirit. That's right. And the fruit of God's spirit is love and joy and peace. Those are the first through evidences that you get the love of God. You get the joy of God. You get the peace in your heart. Uh, no more anxiety and fear about what's going to happen to me when I close my eyes. You know, by nature, we have a fear of death. Sure. That's taken sure. away when you have the love of God and the joy of God and the peace of God. Sure. Gentleness, goodness, faith. I mean, and, and again, allowing you to be the best you that you could be. Ex absolutely. And, and, and you cannot, without, without, this, without this book, w w the 20 years of walking with the Lord and having this book in my life is, I don't even think about that 20 years. I don't it's even It's like another it. life, isn't it? it? It is like born again. Amen. It's yeah. like another life. Did it happen overnight? No, 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 no. Years, <sighs> years as I walked. The growth like process, further, it, yeah. It was a growth process. And yeah. now I look, look, what, the man I was 21 years ago, it's totally different than that. Amen. <laughs> Amen. It's, it's, a, it's a new work of God. And God has great plans for you. You know, God loves you and had plans for you from the time you were little. And what happened is all we like sheep went astray. That's right. And God's calling us back. You listen to the What is Truth program. And again, we're here with you every Sunday morning. Got uh, John D. Giuseppe here with uh, me, Pastor Mike Caesar. And uh, we enjoy the studies. We're in the book of Galatians. We're just finishing the second chapter. It's a great little book. The theme is God will give you salvation and justification by faith, believing what he has written. Uh, catch up with the old shows on Grace and Truth Church. Org. We're going to have a station break. We'll be right back in a moment. Stick around. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. Do like Jesus said. Search the scriptures and you'll know what is true. Amen. Thanks for hanging around. Well, it's always good to uh, study uh, together. We're always praying this show is a blessing to you. And again, go back to the uh, website uh, Grace and Truth Church. Got to spell it out. Grace A N D Truth, and then you got to put the word church. Long word. Grace and Truth Church. dot o r g. Go to the homepage. Click sermons. Click YouTube. Listen to the old uh, shows. Uh, give us a thumbs up. Uh, share it with your friends. Our desire is to do what Jesus's desire is to give you the gift of eternal life, and it only come through the grace of God, when you and I or anyone will believe what God said. You know, a lot of things, John, people believe in God, but the key is, do you believe God? Do you believe God? Do you will believe you believe God? God? I, you know, I preached on that yesterday, as a matter of fact, brother, um, at, a, at a friend of mine's mom passed away, and uh, she was saved. Oh, praise and the Lord. And it's, it, it's, it's a whole different, even people after were saying that, it was so light. Yes, because because she lived a long life, yeah. a good life, Amen. and now she's with her Savior. Amen. Uh, and and knowing that, what a difference! Yes, what a difference in knowing and 
And of course, you know, people, and I just said, I said, I said, everyone should strive to be like this woman right here. Amen. When, 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 it, when it's time to go, because in, in, we look at, to, at the end of her life, it's really the beginning of her life in eternity. Absolutely. You know, but Paul was writing later on to the Thessalonians church, and he was saying, uh, at, at most funerals, you'll know, people that are sorrowing because they have no hope. But he writes to the, ch- the believers in Thessalonica, he says, listen, I, brethren, when, when you have someone that die, you don't have to sorrow as others which have no hope. Because if you believe that Jesus died and rose again, then you're sleeping in Jesus Christ. You've closed your eyes in faith. And we have a promise by the word of the Lord that Jesus himself is going to descend from heaven and, and give you the blessed and holy first resurrection. We're going to be all together with all the believers one day meeting the Lord in the air, in the clouds, and living with the Lord forever. Comfort one another with these words. And that's, I usually look at when I'm asked to officiate a funeral, uh, and, and I have a believer here that uh, closed his eyes in faith and he sleeps in Jesus. It's like a graduation ceremony. He went on. He's at the next level. Right. Yeah, we're still behind. I that's wish it right. could be me in the casket there. I'd like to get up that's, there to the next right. level. I'm that, stuck here right. in this world still laboring. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, two things <laughs> I, on the street. I'll preach two things. I guarantee one of two things is going to happen to you in your life. Either the Lord's going to come back. Yes. All right. Or you're going to die. Yes. I guarantee, listener, that one of those two things are going to happen to you. Yes. And are you ready? Yeah. Are you ready? I mean, right now, I mean, if the Lord comes back, uh, if, if you if you know him, you'll look up and you'll smile and say, here I come, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, uh, and, and if, if you, and, not, if, and as Mike said, and, and when you close your eyes and you're looking at the ceiling in a hospital bed and maybe your body is broken down with cancer or whatnot, and sure, you're hurt, sure, you're sad, but you know what? You don't fear. Yeah. Well, John said if, if he comes and you look up and your eyes see him and you're not saved, you're going to wail and cry yeah, yeah. because now your time is over because what he's going to do, and, and rightfully so, is the first time he came, the, he allowed the unbelievers to kill him. When he returns, he's going to kill the unbelievers. That's what he was trying to warn them in, in uh, Matthew's gospel. And I'll read the passage to you. It's in Matthew chapter 16. And, and Jesus uh, said, listen, he, he said, you I'm, I'm angry with you. He says, you can discern the, the sign of the, the, the sky, but you can't discern the signs of the times. Look at when I come, it's evening and it's fair weather. I'm going to hang on the cross at, you know, three o'clock in the afternoon. And, and it's going the sky's going to be red with my blood and, and you're going to be saved by, it. but when I come back in the morning, and that's when I'm coming back. It's going to be foul weather. The sky's going to be red and lowering. It's going to be your blood. Uh, you, I let you kill me the first time. That's not happening the second time. I'm not coming back as the, the meek, uh, a gentle lamb. I'm coming back as the lion of the tribe of Judah. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. I've earned the right to, to have this world under my dominion, and I'm coming back. People will wail. So are you ready? Are you prepared to meet God? Well, here's how you prepare. You understand what Paul said. We're not justified by the works of the law. We're going to be justified by the faith of Jesus Christ. So we're going to believe in Jesus Christ. And now Paul goes on to say in verse 19, I, through the law, and he means the law of faith, am dead to the law, that be the law of works, that I might live to God. I live to God by faith, not by works. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. You have to come by faith. What's faith? Faith is a feeling? No. Faith is based on tradition? No. Faith is based on the Word of God. Faith comes by hearing the Word of God. Amen. And, and this is how I live to God, through His Word. And, and now Paul goes on to say in verse 20, this is a, a verse you'll often hear quoted by uh, missionaries, evangelists, Uh, people in full-time service, and here's Paul, he's in full-time service, and he says, I am crucified with Christ. In other words, my old man has died. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, I live. That's my new man. Yet not I, meaning not my old man, but now Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, in this body, I'm living by the faith of the Son of God who loved me. And gave himself for me. And I do not frustrate the grace of God, 
what he's what he's showing to us here is that the same grace that saves is the grace that empowers f- to serve and that's what's needed it's grace for grace for grace like john you were talking about your growth process now you look at what happened in was it 2003 mm-hmm. when you received the gospel and you were a babe in christ and you didn't know much what to do just like a baby right. but over time as more and more grace was poured in you through the word of God, you're now a different man because the grace has allowed you to grow in knowledge of the Savior. Yes, yes. And and uh, and like you said in verse 21, I love that verse, I do not frustrate the grace of God. Um, and and you, you don't want to do that. But no. you, know, you, have to do your, you have to do your part, though, Christian. You have to, um, you know, if, if Mike's wife, your wife, Debbie, yeah. said something to you years ago, I, I remember... Uh, she said it a couple of times to you. She, she challenged you. Says, "If there is a God, wouldn't you want to know him?" Right. I right. remember. I if, remember. If he, if he did write a book, wouldn't you? Because you're a book guy. I was if a lost book, man yeah. sitting in a hot tub, hot just tub. enjoying the world. That, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but if he did write a book, wouldn't you want to read it? And, and she got you. And I said, seems, "You know, it, maybe it you're right. Maybe I should look into this." Yeah. So I could prove it wrong. Right. I, maybe. You know how many people have decided to do that and then. Being t- completely turned around. Exactly, exactly. So you have to do do it, but that's that's it. I mean, just just he says God tells us in Jeremiah, learn of me. You're right, Amen. In these things, I delight. Yes. And you know, I'm going to bless you if you take the time to try to learn of me. Sure. And it's not hard. It's not grievous. No. And you will find a growth pattern in you. Now, yes, you could be saved and never look at the book and just be a nice person and not be a disciple and whatnot. But but if you want to grow. As a man, as a woman, with understanding, with wisdom, with his wisdom, uh, you got to have God's word with you, and he will feed it to you. The more you want, the more he'll give you, and you won't get fat. Yeah, and and one of the things he'll pour in, just like when, when you and I were, were new at this, and I was looking at the book the first time, and I still was a sinner. I hadn't been transformed into one of the saints yet because I, I still didn't quite understand, and mm-hmm. and, and there was a, a difference Um I mean, here is this book uh, telling me that uh, faith in Jesus Christ alone, without baptism, without any sacraments, without me giving any money, just me giving my heart to the Lord would transform me and give me a new birth. And it was different than what I had grown up with. I had grown up a Catholic, and I have the uh, Catholic uh, commandments here, and in the Catholic commandments, I have to worship the uh, mass. I have to, um, what I have to do, I have to uh, do these uh, sacraments if anyone doesn't believe in the sacraments. I mean, all these things I was required to do, and the Bible's telling me something different, and I'm wrestling. I'm I'm going, well, what am I going to believe now? Am I going to believe all these things I heard when I was a little boy or what this book is saying to me? And I finally took that step of faith. And I became a child of God by faith in what the Bible says about the Jesus of the Bible. Because the Jesus of my Roman Catholic faith took away my original sin, and then I needed the sacraments to take away my other sins. The Jesus of the Bible says, the blood of Christ cleanseth from all sin. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. And then then I got born again, and then I had to grow just like you, John. You and I had to, to read, and I needed more grace. And every time I would come to the book, I would ask the Lord, help me to grow. And he, he it's like uh, plant food. Grace is like new plant food yeah. to help you grow. Yeah, you know, it, it's it's like, it's, it's it's almost like living in a, in a, in a, a family, an affluent family, right? You could have, you have the child who uh, takes advantage of it, takes advantage of a good home, takes advantage of the education that's offered, takes advantage of, 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 of everything that, that's available to, for their own growth. And then you have, then you, and we've all known, then we have this, the one that they don't do anything, they're good for nothings. They're good for nothings. They live in a the home, they're nice, but they, they, they don't take advantage of it. They're lazy, right? We have that in Christianity. It's up to you, but the Lord will provide for you the wisdom he will it but you have to make an attempt it's not magic it's spiritual you know mike in a really strange way um when you were saying um, a couple of minutes before how the lord's going to come back the second time yes you, you're not going to kill him oh no <laughs> you know? no no and uh, it's it's going to be tough there's parts of the bible that that um uh that are very, they don't they don't preach they don't teach it they don't teach it because because it's 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 very strong 
those are, I think, that won me over to know that the Bible wasn't only Jesus loves me, don't I know? Because the yeah, Bible yeah, tells you. Yeah. You know, it was just a walk with the lilies and harps and little chubby angels and stuff. Because that's what they built that. No, no, no. no. You got to read this book. Yeah. You got to read this book. The about mighty God the, speaks. The, the yeah. mighty God yeah. speaks. Yeah. And, and, and the Old Testament, certain, the, the Jews and, and, and the Philistines and, and, the, and, and, and all the other nations and, and, you know, the wars and what happened. And, and then when God was angry, what happened? And, and now when you go towards, towards revelation and of Jesus Christ and how he's going to take his world back, um, it's not going to be pretty. And, and that's not taught. And you, if you could go in, you could go in and somebody could say, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to preach on that hard, you know, Jesus taking the world back. That doesn't work either. I think it's important that you come upon it in the book. You know, oh, that's right, you're, right, you're, right. You're reading, you're reading Revelation. I stand at the door and I knock, and it goes, and, and as you go through the book, you're like, whoa, he's going to do this, whoa, he's going to do It comes naturally to sure. you as you're learning of your God, as you're learning of your, of your Savior. At least for me, there was, there was like, it was like the scary parts of a book. Right? Like, sure. It's like the scary parts of the book. Sure. You know, and, um, and I think that's what's made it real for me. Amen. And again, but I'm John, and you're not. That might not work for you, but I, I guarantee you there's something in this book, spiritual, the Lord's, the Lord's going to find it because he made you that it's going to work for you. Yeah, I mean, the Lord, when you think about it, if if you are willing to consider it, if you are someone who will at least believe in God, and not if you're an agnostic or an atheist, you, you don't believe in God, I understand. But if you do believe in God in any religion, you, you, you're God, God's powerful. Amen. God, God's the creator. That takes a lot of power to make something. And and um, it, so it's not unbelievable to think that God can exercise his power one day. It was funny, again, this morning on the radio, uh, they had this song, an old one from the 1960s, War, what is it good for? Absolutely nothing. And I'm listening to it thinking, and uh, I'm thinking, what is it good for? Absolutely nothing. Now, here's a strange thing. When God was leaving, leading the children out of bondage and slavery in Egypt, he had to fight all the gods of Egypt to lead them out. And and Moses was singing a song, the Lord is my strength, the Lord is my salvation, the Lord is a man of war. He had to fight the battle for me to break the power of the enemy and sin. Uh, the, the Lord is a man of war. What's it good for? Well, someone's got to exercise war against the power of sin and death and the devil, and the only one who can do it is God. Now, that's a just war. He's trying to free people in bondage. Or God through He's you. He's a powerful God, that's yes. That's right, that's right. You, you look at David, King David. Yeah. I mean, how many wars did he go out? And, but he always took it to the altar beforehand. He could converse with God. The only time he, got him, he ever slipped himself up is when he did not. He was and, fighting the workers and, of iniquity that were hurting women and children. That's right. Somebody has to stand for that which is right. And the beautiful thing about God, God is always right. Is not will not the judge of the earth do right? He always rules with justice and and righteousness. That's the way our God is. The first thing he wants to do is break the power of sin and your life. This is what Galatians is about. Come by faith and receive the gift of salvation. Don't frustrate the grace of God, like that verse says. Right, and, and it goes on to say, for if righteousness came by the law, right, then Christ is dead in vain. That's a good point. That's a great point. I mean, so why, why should Christ, God die? Why would he have to die? Why would Jesus if, die? If And again, that my old, you know, I'll get on my, my soapbox, my old report card thing. Yeah, okay. Do we, all have a, do we all have a spiritual report card? Yeah. If Jesus did not die for us, and it was all based on the law. Right. Okay. Then how do you score it? Yeah. How, 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 would, how would God score what's it? What's the mean, cutoff? What's the cutoff? What's the, you know, how many good deeds do you have to do to get into heaven? Or how many bad things do you have to do to not get into heaven? What, what is the cutoff? And, and, you know? And I think the, that's a great verse that you just read, John. This is Galatians 2, verse 21. Do not frustrate the grace of God. Paul says, I'm not going to frustrate it. One of the ways I frustrate it is if I believe that righteousness came by the law. The law of works. Well, if it did, then Christ died in vain because the issue would be, let's look at it from Christ's standpoint. So so here's Christ. Before he became a child and went into his mother's womb, he's sitting up there in heaven. Paul writes about that in another book, and, he, and it's the book of Philippians. And he says, uh, Christ, 
was sitting in heaven in the form of God. He thought it not robbery to be equal to God because he was sitting right next to God on the throne and, and he was one part of the Godhead. But he made himself of no reputation. He came down in the mother's womb and, and became a servant and made in the likeness of men. But wait a second, before he did it, three days before he did it, the father and the son are sitting there talking and saying, you know, what's the big problem on planet Earth? What's the biggest? Is it poverty? Is no. it, uh, is it um, disease? Is it pollution? And then and they, they say, well, no, the problem is sin. Because it, it, when people sin, the wages of sin is death. And, and all these people are dying, and we're the God of the living. We don't want people to die. We want to give them life. Right. And so then and Jesus says, well, is there a way, Father, that maybe, perhaps, because John was talking about it, the report card, Let's figure out a way by the works of the law. We'll come up with a report card. We can get a grade. Let's say 93 is sufficient, Dad. Why don't, oh, 93 is good enough. Right. 93 will do it. Okay. And so we're going to make that the cutoff point. Okay, well, here's the problem. Some will say, well, that, that's good. But there are some people that are slower than others. There are some people that are handicapped. There are some people that are retarded. And so then God looks at it and he says, well, that, that cuts them out. It cuts them out. He says, so, so I'm going to have to go do the work and get a, a 100% for all of them so I can give them a perfect report card. And that's a great point, Mike, because nothing would be fair. Yeah. Nothing would be spiritual fair because if you, if, 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 even if you load it to 90, what about the guy that did 89? Oh, gosh. All right. What about, and what about <laughs> like, if, you know, and what again, what if they came from a, an area of, of the earth that they didn't know certain things? Just, right. Just, it wouldn't be fair. So the only fair thing to do, which was very unfair, yeah, was to give you life. Yeah. Well, I'll, them, give you, I'll give you the gift. I'll give you the gift. But, but I'm going to have to make a way to, to hap, for it to happen, and I'm going to do it by grace. It's the only way I can do it. Right. So Christ, that's why, so Father, this is the only way. He even prayed the last day, Father, is there any other way? That's right. And Father said, no, son, you, tomorrow you've got to hang on that cross for them. If you don't, there is no other way. That's right. I can't give them righteousness any other way. That's right. You're not going to die in vain, son. If you die on the cross for them, you'll be able to give it to everybody. Right. It can be the gift of grace for all. Right. But, but keeping it very basic. Yeah. Was that fair to Jesus Christ? I mean, he lived a perfect life. He's yeah. up in heaven. I mean, if, if anything, he just said, hey, you know what, Father? Let's just, let's just scrap this experiment and start something else, right? Yeah. It wasn't fair. He had to do, to, to, he, to, to be fair to us, he had to do something that we would see, I would see as unfair. It's not fair. Yeah. And that's why, that's why, we have that, that, that debt yeah. to, to Jesus, that sure. spiritual heart, heartfelt debt. Like, you did this for me. So we've all sinned, right? Right. I mean, all of us. Uh -huh. Is there anyone that hasn't? Uh, the, uh, okay, so Jesus had but the rest of us have. From right, Adam all right. the way down, we've all at one point in our life, and probably many times a day if we really right. get serious right. about it. Okay, but here comes someone who did no sin. Neither was guile or foul words ever found in his mouth. And and he was reviled by the people, and they smacked him in the face. And he suffered, and he threatened not, and he committed himself to his Father that judges righteously. And him own self, he bare all our sins in his body on the tree, that we now, as sinners, could be dead to sin and live unto righteousness by the stripes that he had on Calvary's tree so we could be healed. It's not fair. And if we come to him, we become one of his sheep and he becomes our shepherd. Amen. That's that's not fair. I mean, that's that's a spiritual to me that's a spiritual guilt that I have. He had to die for my sins because I yeah. couldn't pull it off. Right? You couldn't pull it off. So and and, and again, and 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 he had a he, and, and you know, there's, there's some people that are worse sinners than others. I mean, who knows? Yes. But but the fact of the matter is is this is what he had to do. And Paul goes on to say I don't frustrate the grace of God. Now, right. I, read, I read this, um, Mike, is that Paul was a Pharisee. Yes. So he was used to Judaism and all the religious traditions, traditions and all the and everything. And he, rituals. And, 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 yeah. and, we, and we know that one of the problems with Paul is, is that they, the Jews tried to kill him because he was pulling them away to salvation by faith, this, this new way. Paul, they still wanted Paul to... 
well, you still have to you still have to be circumcised, Paul. Make them still be circumcised, and make them do. You know, they still wanted all these things, and Paul, and I, 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 I'm not going to frustrate. Yeah, as a matter of fact, now that you look, that's verse 21 of chapter two. I do not frustrate the grace of God. That's right. All right. Now, if you go to the same book, chapter five, and and look at verse two, if you be circumcised. Christ will profit you nothing. Right. That's one way to frustrate God's grace That's is saying, right. I need to do this, I need to do and that. there's some religions today all over this world. You need to be baptized. They, they, I've heard of that one. You know, you, you know, you need to, I mean, there's, there's, there's all these. I need to be confirmed. I need to be a member of the church. I need to do a certain work. You know, I need, Jehovah, Jehovah Witness, the Mormons, I mean, go, Islam. You know? Oh, I need to have the five pillars of the faith, yeah, right. You know, it's just every religion. But meanwhile, meanwhile, God said, it, it, Paul, you're frustrating. It, this Paul is saying this for all this. I, I you could do that, but I'm not going to frustrate the grace of God. Yeah, he went through all this. He now, I, I died with him. I, I, I don't really have an understanding of this. It doesn't seem very fair to me that he would do this for me. But he must have really loved me. Why I don't know. Yeah, but I'm not going to frustrate it. Yeah, I'm not going to make him die in vain. You know, I was looking at the Gospel of Mark when uh, Jesus was. Um, approached by the scribes and the Pharisees, and they, they were trying to call him a hypocrite. And this is in the seventh chapter of Mark. And the Pharisees and the scribes came, and they saw uh, Jesus Christ and his disciples, and he was doing a Bible lesson with them, and they were eating some bread, and they hadn't washed their hands. You know, and they said, oh, the, this is defiled because you're not washing your hands. And uh, we Pharisees and uh, we Jewish religionists, except we wash our hands off and we won't eat. These are the traditions of the elders is to make sure we're sterilized and clean before we eat. And when we come from the market, unless we wash our hands, we won't eat. And many other things we've received, we wash our cups and our pots and our brazen vessels and tables. And so we ask you, why don't your disciples walk according to our traditions, the traditions of our elders. You have the nerve to eat your bread with unwashing hands. And Jesus turned and he said to them, oh, well did Isaiah, that's Isaiah the prophet. He said, you guys are like hypocrites because you're honoring God with your lips, but your heart is far from God because in vain you're worshiping God by teaching the commandments of men and you're laying aside the commandment of God and you're holding your traditions like washing pots and cups and many other things you do. And, they, and it's curious, in verse 9 he says, Jesus says, full well ye reject the commandment of God that you can keep your tradition. And uh, the, there's a marginal reading in the King James Bible. The word reject is the word frustrate. Mm -hmm. Frustrate. To frustrate is to reject something. Okay. And that's why he was saying in Galatians, I'm not going to frustrate or reject the grace of God. Grace comes by faith. That's right. Grace doesn't come now, by works. Now for, now, for the listener, now, it wasn't that Jesus and his disciples were eating and they had mud on their hands. It wasn't that. <laughs> it, 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 it wasn't. It, it was, it's a tradition. It's a doctrine of men. It's something the Jews did. They made a show of everything. You had to wash your hands. You know, and then you had to watch. And they even right. wrote it in a book. They yeah, had a book, exactly. And, and it, you know, and and again, it was it was not it, it was not for um for cleanliness purposes. It was it was oh, a, religious. It, I'm yeah, closer to God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> was, no, and, and another thing, Mike, before when you were reading about Jesus, when they said uh, he he uh, he was humbled, he went to the cross, he didn't say, and you know, and so many people paint them as as uh, this effeminate. Uh, this effeminate stained glass savior, you know, with the, like, woe is me, a man of sorrows. There's nothing further than that. Let me tell you something. Jesus Christ was all man. Oh, he was a man's man. He, he, was, he was all man. I mean, when you read the Bible and you read about this, it, it, you know what kind of a man saying these words and to get up and to get up and know what he was faced with, knowing that, knowing that eventually he was going to be crucified, right? But to get up and to talk, I mean, no fear. To and talk to, to preach and, and in front preach. of those people and know that they were getting angry that, and they're looking at him. That's right. That's right. Daggers and again, in the eye. And yeah. I, always, I always tell the kids, I said, you know, Jesus was a carpenter. 
And, you know, when he built the chair, he didn't go to Home Depot and pick up wood. Didn't have power tools. No, no. He went out he and cut down chop, a tree. He had to chop down a tree. Then he had to, then he had to, yeah. then he had to whatever they had to use to yeah. go ahead and to make it to make it like a leg up chair and then go out and get another one because there's four legs on a chair. Yeah. Right? And he so, ate a healthy diet and he lived uh, healthy and he walked. And, and it says in the Gospel of John, they took 100 pounds of uh, spices to anoint him. And the Jews, it was a two to one ratio, meaning he weighed 200 pounds, probably of solid muscle. That's right. When he overturned those tables, Tables in the temple, they weren't plastic folding That's tables. Right. They weren't Walmart tables, right? <laughs> those, those, that was timber. Yeah, I bet. You know? Yeah. So again, <laughs> again, you know, we get these uh, these preconceived or these stereotypical ideas, and so said of God because of the doctrines of men. Yeah. You know, Amen. even doctrines of men outside the church. You know, oh, there is no God, or he couldn't have done that, or he had to be this, or he he had a he he must have married Mary Magdalene. Yeah, and went to India. I mean, that, when, do that, that's, when do you get these things? That that's a, a yeah. book that was written four hundred right. years after he died. Yeah, exactly. I mean, so what what can we trust? As as Paul was saying to the Galatians, and and uh, God's always trying to tell us, you can trust God's words. It's better to put confidence in the writings of God than the writings of men. That's and that's what we do. We only well, got uh, fifty six seconds left on today's show, and we're real thankful that you, you joined us. So fast. I guess when, the, you're, when it, you're late, it goes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> things go fast. So, I guess. So the recommendation next week: tune in late, <laughs> <on> folks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and, but uh, we're with you every uh, Sunday morning at uh, seven a.m. for one hour, and we're thankful. We're going to be with you as long as the Lord allows, and and we have a feeling real soon we may not be with you. We may be taken in a great promise of the rapture. And what we want you to do is we want you to join us by faith. That's why we have this show, What is Truth? Go to the Grace and Truth a website. Spell out Grace, A-N-D, Truth, Church. Grace and Truth, Church, dot O-R-G. Hit the homepage. Hit the sermons tab. Hit uh, YouTube. Listen to the What is Truth programs. Share it with your friends. We're going to be with you again next week. And uh, we look forward at 7 a.m. for you joining us. And until we join you, do like Jesus said. Search the scriptures and you'll know what is true. Amen.